Hello guys and welcome to the Pro Dota Cup by Smashcast TV. We are here in the last match of the day. A winner's bracket match that got delayed by only a single day as SG Esports retired from this tournament, giving away to Elite Wolves to take their spot so we can actually have some matches this tournament and not all just Steph wins. We all were kind enough to allow us to do, allow this to happen. And agreed to this conditions. Playing today at 5.30 in the morning so we can watch the sun rise as we watch some great Dota. And of course, we're in the Pro Dota Cup American version sponsored by Xbet. And if you guys want to check out a great betting site for live betting, feel free to go check out Xbet. And actually use the code BOUNTYX for a 100 euro deposit free. Uh, that said, guys, we are in the first match of the best of three between Elite Wolves and Wheel Wreck while whistling. See who can get the first step into the finals for the winner's brackets. Let's see who wins this first matchup. My name is D Swordfish. I'll be your cast for today, and as always, I'll be joined by Vate Dota. Hello, everyone, and I'm very glad to finally see this match. And it was against Will Wreck while whistling one of two, like one of the best teams actually now in the Pro Dota Cup, and it's going to be a very interesting game. Let's start with the draft. Sanking and Warlock as two supports, I guess, uh, for Elite Wolves. Warlock grants a lot of sustain on your lane, pretty decent position five, grants you uh, very strong laning fates, amazing like, team fights with golems, yet the only problem that you got a very uh, high cooldown, so most likely they will pick up uh, something to uh, fit this theme of a uh, high cooldowns because you want if your tempo of the rest of your heroes is a little bit different and they are ready to fight almost all the time without these big cooldowns warlock maybe maybe not that efficient yet here comes the puck i'm not sure if it's going to be a mid lane or off lane yet but so far we see a great synergy there is a control of the bkb with warlock lockdown and with the dream coil from Puck, plus it will be easier to land an epicenter for Sand King. Pretty strong, also magical burst, especially in the beginning of the game from side of an elite wolves lane. Uh, with, with, if Sand King will rotate uh, quite a lot uh, from lane to lane, uh, mid and in particular INA late will suffer quite a bit, a bit for for will require whistling. It, um, it, Wondering what are they going to pick up? So we see opening with Earthshake and Crystal Maiden. Uh, they may play it as a position four and uh, five. And Shaker may rotate a lot, try to help his teammates. Maybe we will see something like Doom. Room instead of a will require whistling to shut down Warlock or any other hero like Puck. It may be also a very decent idea. We've seen this lineup uh, previously in the group stage in the very beginning. Uh, yet interesting bands, uh, banning out Viper and Batfighter and picking up Weaver. Very mobile hero. Probably they, uh, they're hoping that um, he will be able to avoid a lot of lockdown from side of the elite rules. Maybe we will see a Lincoln Sphere, one of the first uh, items on him, at least to get rid of a Boro Strike. And that's the only targeted uh, stun so far from their side. The rest of them are AoE and having a pretty high cooldown. Also, Weaver is very mobile here in a row with Crystal Maiden on the lane. They got a pretty high damage. If it's going to be an Earthshaker position four, it will be easy to kill almost whomever will be in off lane except for Puck probably because he got a very um, reliable escape really illusory orb but he will need to be careful about this uh, because if he will try to fall with orb he got a very high chances of dying there are not that many heroes who can jump over the fissure especially in, in the off, in terms of offlane heroes bad rider was already uh, bent out puck uh, is picked by Ellen wilson we don't know if it's going to be mid lane or off lane yet so maybe they will go for some kind of a huh legion commander mm, interesting decision she can purge off the, any kind of um, disables from her teammates or from herself. She's not that vulnerable, she can fight back, she gets a little bit of a sustain with moment of courage and worst case scenario, if everything is awful, she can rotate to jungle, but most likely she will stay on the lane because the amount of burst with overwhelming odds uh, from her side makes some hero like a crystal maiden for example a pretty vulnerable and easy killable even though uh, weaver is a high uh, 
high mobility hero. He still doesn't have that much health. So maybe the pick of a Legion Commander in aggressive uh, against the uh, Trialing may be a very good idea for Elite Duels. Plus they got burst with Epicentia, they got burst uh, with Falk, and a lot of controls over BKB, yet from side of a will wreck while whistling, we already see Templar Assassin. Very strong mid laner, she may deal with Puck quite easily. Maybe she will suffer a bit if Sanking will rotate uh, from lane to lane, but amount of power they have in the early game is quite quite a lot i must admit uh, with temple assassin and earthshaker um, i can't say that it will be easy to kill puck yeah because still due to illusory orb and his face shift but someone like sanking who will try to gain ta in mid may become an easy prey Warlock is not that kind of a hero who will rotate anyway. Both, uh, both Earthshaker and Crystal Maiden are heroes who got a very decent ganking potential. There is a Frostbite, who may work quite nice against Buck plus Fisher. Uh, from their side, also Crystal Maiden is a decent jungler. And while Warlock is relying heavily on being full position 5, some kind of a babysitter on the lane, relying on getting XP only on some kind of a random kills in the offlane or from pulling. Both supports from side of the world work while whistling are much more versatile in these terms. Most likely Derp Derp will dedicate himself not only to helping a uh, Weaver on the lane, because I guess Weaver will be completely fine against Legion Commander on this lane. He uh, may dedicate himself to make uh, stacks right. for Aine late and with Drow Ranger actually. It's going to be a... Huh. Is it going to be an actually position 4? No. Weaver and offlane Earthshaker? Probably offlane Weaver, I want to say, here, rather than position 4 yeah. Earthshaker. Just because it's more common than running a position 4 Weaver. Yeah. But with Draw Ranger, position 4 Weaver could work out pretty nicely uh, because of how the hero naturally transitions, and you already have the Crystal Man to help her out. But either way, it would honestly work out. But that's an interesting pickup of Draw Ranger. Pretty ballsy. And Elite Wolves. Wow, I like that a lot as well. Both teams have really strong lineups. Lycan adds a lot of uh, uh, Kenki potential against the Drow range. Not really Kenki potential, just a follow-up potential. Really mobile hero. Goes well with Legion Commander and Puck in that sense that they have, to some degree, very mobile heroes that can gank the Drow Ranger without much difficulty. Lycan also can stay alone in lane, so rotations from Warlock and Sanking are very easy to do, meaning that Warlock can stay with Legion Commander in lane, and Lycan can just kind of stay alone while Sanking ganks the mid lane with Papita, which is also pretty important. It also brings you the pushing power you're looking for. Lycan plus Leech Commander is a great amount of pushing power. And Lycan suffers mostly against stuns and roosts, but in general, press the attack and take those away from you. So, And it's going to be a, a Weaver support, like you said. Yep. Okay, that's interesting. That is interesting. I haven't seen a Weaver support in America in pff, forever. Well, I guess they got much more killing potential on the offlane with two, like three, uh, ranged heroes. Against Legion Commander, plus he just locked down catch up potential with Weaver and his Shikuchi minus Sama, which works out amazingly well with Drow plus Slow. And Legion Commander may suffer a lot on this lane, plus Drow Ranger grants an aura for TA in the mid. So INA Lake is extremely strong in the beginning with his refraction spark. He doesn't really have any kind of a, a ways of dealing with these refractions early on, so he may experience minor issues. With last hitting, yet the last hitting animation is pretty well, good uh, on Puck, and he doesn't suffer that much against TA when he will get his face shift uh, because uh, all the TA players they're heavily relying on harassing your opponent through creeps. Uh, yeah, and with uh, when you're playing against Puck, it's not that easy. Well, I'm not sure uh, how well if Shaker will do against the Lycan on the top lane, especially with the Warlock, they got a lot of sustain. But I guess he already picked up two clarities. Worst case scenario, he will rotate, um, I don't know, to some kind of outer lane, maybe TP to the bottom and try to kill Legion Commander or get assistance for from Derp Derp and Mad Men on top I mean, lane and kill Warlock. Usually the, the two clarities is kind of a sign of, I'm not going to head into lane, I'm just going to use Fissure and try to get, even even though the creeps yeah. now go around the Fissure, which is a, a recent update, like now, like a, a day ago, you can still get a decent block with a Fissure, because they will still go around the Fissure to some degree, and you can body block them afterwards. And I think that's what Dota the Two is planning on. I don't know if he's read the update, it could be that he's going to be surprised by this. But anyway, the, the, usually the clarities are an indication of that. Either that, or you're going to last him with the Fissure, which is usually not that effective, but we'll yeah. see. Um, Stinger, by the way, finds I Annihilate, and Annihilate should be fine. Stinger might not be, though. Where is this burst? I got his only escape mechanism. Of course, 
Uh, this time a Templar. Level 1. Not so powerful as you mentioned. We usually go for level 1 side blades to get the harassment out, so you don't have the damage yeah. necessary for a 1v1 engagement. Yeah, but you got a drop. Full skill for aura and... Yeah, that's 5 damage. Really reflections that much, but it's still, it's, still it's, it's like at least something, yeah. 520, well, of course a big of a deal in the very beginning, but I guess getting more harassment and easier last hits. Uh, because... I'm not sure about this one. Wow. Oh, actually, I'm like suffering so much against Papita. I like how the Papita's playing. This is uh, the difference between a medium level puck and a really high level puck, mm. which Papita very is. Ballsy. Very ballsy. I mean, it's not really very ballsy as much as it is just uh, the aggression is controlled on this puck. He knows exactly. First of all, Papita is a really good puck player and a really good TA player, so he understands both pretty well. Understands the matchup pretty well. So he's he he puts a lot of pressure on the TA early on the level, so he doesn't stay behind the creep, so he can get harassed by those side blades because he knows that TA. If you attack the puck head on, you're not really getting much advantage out of it. However, oh. Mad Ming evens out this matchup, and now Papita in trouble. Mad Ming might even get the kill here. One more hit, and Papita's dead. No, Fairy Fire, last second, saves him, Salv as well, and he'll be okay. Good rotation by the Weaver, regardless. Yeah, I nearly probably could have got a kill, but the um, problem is that he was taking a lot of creeps, and he doesn't want to take that much harassment in the very beginning. Uh, and now he got his refractions, so things are a little bit better. And meanwhile, Stinga on the mid lane, they know that there's no refractions out there. Jumping on INA lane, then first blood comes to Papita. Ah, it's pretty impressive uh, rotation there by Stinger. Really good use of the trees, exactly. Like, usually you, we talk about Sankin not being the best ganker in the mid lane because of his low range of burst strike, but there he utilized it perfectly. Almost like he was a Shadow Shaman player. And with that unlined, it couldn't really do much against it as Papita just bursted him down. And now Mad Men in the top lane goes against Masoku. That's the objective. Seems like the two wants to get the kill, but with Fisher, yeah, not going to be committed here. Mad Men is just giving a lot of lane presence to all the lanes, making sure that lanes go decently well in general. But Stinger is his counterpart, and Stinger does have much more kill potential than a Weaver early on. Mad Men relies too much on that damage and wants to get a level 2 so he can at least get one level of Swarm or one level of Gemini attack, depending on the kind of build he is deciding to go for. Well, with the Blightstone and Draw Aura, I think Gemini just attack is not that bad at all. And do you know we were talking that Lycan is having an easy time against uh, Earthshaker on the lane? Now with Waver, it's much harder for him. They're relying on constant sustain from Wallop. And while on the bottom lane, there is a lot of harassment. 2 on 2 in the end, uh, it is. I expect something like uh, Trialing. Well, not a Trialing, to be honest. Trialing from side of a wheel to defend Draw better. Stinger, careful, in the bottom lane, Frostbite stopping his uh, burst strike from coming out, or he doesn't have enough mana, even with the magic stick, they want to kill him. But of course, the Crystal Maiden doesn't deal that much damage, even with the Drow Aura, and sadly, they're going to let him go, self, uh, making sure that he stays perfectly okay in the bottom lane. So, Stinger, again, harassment's kept up, but not too much damage as yet. We're, I'm wondering when the Warlocks will start rotating, because oh. in the top lane, Shaq is already being harassed by a lot, so is Masoku. I'm going to take those swarms up, and of course, with a Shadow Ward, that Lycan will be perfectly okay. Level 2 Feral Impulse already giving him a lot of region anyway, so he should be fine. Well, on the bottom lane, the problem is that Dark Dark may be an easy prey for Stinger and the Chin Commander. He is fairly low movement speed, and actually he wanted to cancel that clarity so much on the Sankey, and he may even pay for this. Oh, oh he's got his Boros Strike. Right? There's the Boros Strike, right? Stinger. Will be in rage? No? No, they hit him with a Slow. Frost Arrow. That means there's no more burst strikes. However, Legion Commander is still a dangerous prey. Or dangerous threat, sorry. And they can't kill Stinger in time. Stinger's actually being a hugely annoying threat for the guys at, uh, at the wheel. Putting a lot of pressure in all lanes, forcing rotations in the supports, and still, like while he's doing all this, doesn't actually die himself. So they can't get something out of this engagement. Good stuff, Stinger. Yes. And this run on Papita, almost level 6. You just need to wait for his level in the mid lane. But I guess he won't uh, utilize it uh, that much. If he rotated on the uh, bottom, uh, draw would have been an easy kill, in my opinion, especially with the Dream Call. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Dodo the 2 doesn't have mana for the Fisher Mad Men. Keep on attacking Masoku. Masoku is dropping for fairly low. But damage is not enough. Rotation from Stinger, and maybe Dodo the 2 needs to be more careful here. Almost in the range of a Boro Strike. It's not enough. They're letting him go, and finally, Drell gets a safer lane and without this annoying sanking here 
Okay, for Masoku, he's being hit. Dota the two gets the echo, the gen told him up. But Masoku survives this, and Stinger now chasing after Dota the two, the easier target. Burst like clips on him. As Earthshaker seems to be losing his life, still has the Enchant Totem, will fight against Stinger. He's the Fairy Fire, Shack will end up getting that kill, but Stinger will lose his life against Mad Meng. So support for Offlaner there, however, a bit more experience going to the Lycan there. Lycan is doing much better than Drow. 500 gold ahead, and that's quite a lot, especially in the beginning of the game, minute 5. And uh, even though I expected some kind of stacks you know, happening in the jungle with putting Stinger on the lane against Drow Ranger, they forced uh, Derp Derp to constantly defend his carry, so he can't really um, secure form for INA late. And he is forced to push the lane after that, go to the jungle, uh, stack a bit. He already got his level 6, just need to probably wait for Melt, and he can farm quite efficiently. Yet there is a rotation uh, in the enemy jungle by Sankin, he already got a new server. What's stealing bounty? Probably time to get some kind of a vision on the enemy ancients, uh, they know that something may happen there. Meanwhile, on the bottom, they are harassing for Lich and Commander. He's only level 5, but with help on Singer, they may try to turn on KVH. Thanking, silenced, and most likely he will be fine. Here comes the Boros Strike, but Papita here jumping in. Dream Coil on the for Derp Derp. KVH tries to TP out. Damage is too high. Derp Derp most likely losing his life. Also here, double kill for Papita. And with that, E Wolves get a double kill here in the bottom lane. And Dream Call that even missed on the Drow Ranger, not even necessary. Really good gust by Drow Ranger, but taking advantage of the fact that she's just a very weak hero in the early game and easy to gank. That Sanking putting a lot of pressure onto him. A really good pick for Stinger. The position for Sanking actually getting the same level as a position for Weaver. And usually Weaver has a better time getting those experience up. And of course, beating the Crystal Main has been in lane this whole time, allowing the Warlock to stay in lane with the Lycan and secure him a pretty easy one, even against Order of the Two and Mad. Madming's combination. And even now that, that Madming has a medallion of courage on him, they're not able to kill Shaq just yet because, again, of the main team on the region that they have. Swarm plus medallion, a lot of damage on the Shaq, but that's yeah, just harassment. They don't really want to follow this through too much. However, Masoko is finally coming back to the lane, see if they can heal his liking a, a bit. And Dota 2 is committed to this? What are you. Okay, no. <laughs> that's not the plan, is it? Evil just wants to hit the liking a bit. Yeah. It's pretty interesting that now we were. And he's starting as a position of a semi carry rotates to the bottom lane with Shikuchi. He got all the chances to survive efficiently uh, against the Legion Commander. Soon he will get his time lapse. So I'm not sure if Elidus will be able to rest him down. KVH, meanwhile, rotates in the jungle. And what's important that he's not uh, farming in the uh, biggest part uh, of the jungle uh, on the bottom lane. He switches actually to the top one because it's much easier to defend, also, very useful high ground which gives you a lot of vision on what is happening around bounty room uh, fairly close to him plus shrine so tps are secured in the worst case scenario now he will get his level six finally gets much stronger finished his power threads and next item going to be a desolator hmm Ah, well, that's going to be an early farming uh, TA. Probably going to see some Ancient Stacks coming up to him. And we already see a triple Ancient Stack here. And, ah, oh, actually, double Ancient Stack there as well. So, Anali doesn't have a good amount of free farm coming to the mid lane. And Puck won't, or coming to the mid game. And Puck won't have that option as well. So, that's going to really benefit the guys at wheel. When the TA starts snowballing a bit out of control. Maybe not the easiest Blink Dagger in the world. But certainly a pretty fast Desolator. At least that's the hopes for them. In the bottom lane, we're trying to see some uh, objective taken by this Legion. Commander. Swarm misses entirely on him. And tower is within the die range, but not destroyed yet. Mad Meng not deciding to take the tower down just yet, because he wants to keep the cliff possible. Yeah, also they may try to go for a kill. Uh, bait Legion Commander uh, into a duel and get TP. And on top lane, actually, they are bullying like fairly successful. Even though Drow is doing much worse than Lycan. Um, he's finally not snowballing out of control, yet here comes Papita. Dream Coil on KVH. Great Fisher may save the day. Oh, KVH running away. Keep on being chased by Shaq. Gust keeps on chasing. Oh, rude. Wolf got punished for this. KVH survives. Papita completely out of money. He got a double damage, but Howl is out. Seconds to the illusory orb. Derp Dope runs in closer with the frostbite. Last seconds and the double kill for TA. 
secures an early desolator for him, and later on, when he will get his blade dagger, it will be a complete nightmare for Masoko. Imagine DA with the refractions, with the draw damage, and desolator jumping on you, humble position five wall, a couple of hits, and you're dead. And that will be a major issue for enemy folks. But they got a plenty of lockdown, and I guess in this situation, they really want to initiate first, but from side of um, Will, they got an Earthshaker. And they may put themselves in a pretty difficult position because when you're playing against an Earthshaker and take a look at their heroes. So, Buck jumps in right in the middle of the fight. Yeah, uh, Lycan, melee hero, hero, relies to be close to the target. Uh, Sankin jumps in with Epicenter. Legion commanders, same thing. So, most likely we will see a lot of uh, free men Icos. Meanwhile, Anigli hiding in Melt. He's being stunned out. Derp Dog running in. He doesn't have a freeze and field. Here comes the Epicenter being committed. There is no shrine here. Echo Slam destroying for Legion Commander immediately. Now it's time for Pepito's retreat. He's still got his illusory. Oh, Derp Dog may go down here. And they're letting him go. Can't really do anything to the spot anymore, especially without his root from Crystal Maiden. Yet I Annihilate getting a fairly fast Desolator. He'll be a real threat in this game. And uh, with his Desolator and Blink Dagger later on, he will not only exterminate Warlock at um, his like super easily, he will also grant a lot of space for KVH, who is forced to farm in the jungle now. Yeah, with this, uh, the, guy, the guys from uh, Wheel won't be able to take the objectives as you would expect for the Drow Ranger lineup. And you're going to have to divide the jungle not only between KVH, but also with uh, TA and KVH. Even trying to farm the harder, farm in the lane, trying to give a bit of advantage to Derptor, trying to get his levels. And of course, to Annihilate himself, who's trying to get those important uh, stacks up. And that makes sense, because early on, Drow Ranger can still withstand a lot of pain and punishment, and still be a relevant hero because of his, uh, his abilities itself. While well, Annihilate does need those basic designs later plus blink dagger a really good timing however the question is how long will kvh have to endure these subpar farming speeds well we'll see very soon as elite worlds will have to make one of those mistakes or at least force a team fight soon enough and see how that turns out for them well the problem for elite worlds is that um, like not even a problem for uh, i'm sorry uh, i wanted to say that for wheel even though they're playing a draw strat and you expect something like booking up and oh so we actually plays to what here now they know where draw is uh even though you expect uh, with this draw lineups that you go as five yeah group up as early as possible and take this advantage of having a lot of rage girls and this increased damage okay well in the bottom line they're actually going on ninja commander uh Madling actually chase until the very end rain drops were used time lapse and leaving them at peace. Uh, the point is that they need to farm their items first from side of a wheel because Drow oh. is insanely weak. Yeah. Uh, he will Careful. be fine. Shapeshift. Go to the two. Uh, the objective is That's to counter initiate. Stinger comes in as well. There's the golem. Uh, stun into two. KVH. Oh, with that fatal bonds, a lot of damage to both of them. However, door to the two will be the target of aggression. He stuns a couple. Actually, even gets the fissure off. But the wolf is still pretty fast, and they'll end up finishing off this Earthshaker Echo Slam before he dies. But did absolutely nothing but deal damage to this Lycan who just ran away last second. And Weaver still trying oh. to look for some kill. Stinger hung around for a bit too long. Sacrificed himself for Wheel as Masoku is now hit with a swarm. They have vision of him. He's gonna try to TP in the middle of. Of Mad Meng's attacks and he will be successful at doing so. Right, Papita meanwhile was just pushing that mid lane up trying to get a tier 1 tower early. You know, Warlock is one of the best heroes when you're playing against 5-man lineups with his chaotic offering later on. It will be Blink Tank on Buck, plus uh, there will be Epicenter from their side. And it's really hard to push towers for a wheel unless they try to make some kind of a pick uh, early on or unless they got their BKBs or a lot of uh, sustain from their side because heroes from side of elite bulls are so good especially like supports even without items they're not that greedy they don't need that much or oh, yet um crystal maiden is fairly weak without items yes it's great that she gets an arcane herb but she is just a uh, pure food for whomever from side of elite bulls so uh, a legion commander for fuck they can feed on her fairly easy weaver though farming is fairly fairly well he's already level 10 and maybe we will see his uh, transformation into position oh careful uh, legion uh rooted in the bottom lane they've used the freezing field she's gonna be fine never mind no, we we were we were usually doesn't them. translate to position. Like if you run a position four weaver because of the build up being so different of a solar crest and an mm -hmm. agonims, 
I mean, not even solo crest, usually medallion and then Agnum straight up. And then you want to go for a four staff. It's really hard to transition from position four weaver to position one weaver because the buildup is completely different. It's most likely going to be just a weaver that brings a lot of utility to the table, which is good. And I think that's even more necessary than getting another carry. Yeah, In fact, top lane. Yep. Drow Ranger silenced. The attacker, KVH, Dream Call, and she's going to be brought down immediately as Mad Mank TPs in, tries to help her team it out, and they see both Papita and Stinger try to eliminate those bugs, and will do so in time. Papita finally taking it off him. Mad Mank still annoying him, though. The sentry's around, so they see Mad Mank entirely. Papita will try to lose her over way, and he will in time. And no Blink Tiger needed, just TPing there, tricking the enemy team. As Elite Wolves lose the Lycan in the back lines, Annihilate actually managed to get the kill with a Frostbite, now look looking for Stinger. But he's gonna be able to walk away immediately. Uh, yeah, but Weaver with the draw or Shinepam is much more efficient. Oh, is it going to be a duel? Do they over have to do this? Oh, Echo Slam committed with Annihilate. It's not an issue to burst down this Legion commanded to be from Stinger, but won't be able to save his teammate. Jim Coil is not up yet. Golems are there. There is no Echo Slam. Oh, one hit! His TA is destroying everyone. Freeman Golems. Papita jumping in, bursting down. I'll check it immediately. Refractions are on on TA, yet Shadow work has quite, quite a lot of damage. Uh, here comes the Shrine also, and double damage comes for Lycan. Will he pay for this? 44 seconds to, from, to the shapeshift. First item, Necronomicon, uh, on Lycan, already up. Yeah, it's been up for like three minutes, four minutes. Yep. I mean, it's been, it's a, it's a good item on Lycan if you want to go, oh, actually, Crystal Man, middle lane, puck him into this, Dream Call even used, Derp Derp, we'll go down. Uh, oh, wait, actually, TPs, this team fight is going to continue as Lord of the Two is coming in, there's no Blink Dagger though on him, so, and no Echo Slam either, it's a bit of a difficult place to fight, Papita starting to push this tower down, they want to at least take the tier one before they go out, Mad Meng trying to do the wraparound, they go onto Masoku, they take away all his HP and also his armor, and one more trap will slow him down enough, Masoku, where are you going, old man with a stick, oh, that pressed the attack, dispelled the slow in time, Masoku won't lose his life, however, they do protect that tier one tower in the mid lane. Yeah, and instead uh, they can take the from and it is. Yet, you know, the problem is that uh, uh, Lycan Necronomicons was a thing for a very long time, but when you're playing against Drow, against TA, don't you think that some kind of a Heaven's Helmet may be fairly good for Lycan? Isn't that kind of a build which a lot of Lycans are actually getting lately? Yeah, it's not a bad item, but you can still get it after Necronomicon. The reason why Necronomicon is so good is because it's a cheap item, and with the new shapeshift, it gives you crit to your Necronomicon creeps. And many people actually tried experimenting this when they first the change first came, and it's not a bad item to actually grab on like, and especially if you're looking for a bit of a pushing lineup or a bit more of a snowball lineup against someone like a Drow Ranger or a TA, especially who actually TA doesn't do well against a lot of damage sources because of her refraction being naturally weak towards that. You get a lot of power just out of a simple Necronomicon on like, and it's a really good snowbally item if you get it before minute 20, which is what he did, or which what he'll do as you on Necronomicon level 3. Now, you find KVH, he's still at Necronomicon, does not want to go on to him instead, wasted a shapeshift for absolutely nothing. And, well, KVH will survive this in the end. That's unfortunate. That could have been an easy kill. Necronomicon creeps up. Yeah, that's true. Also, he can keep Necronomicon. So on uh, TA, for example, get rid of Refractions fairly fast, cancel her Blink Dagger. But hey, I melee doesn't need to participate in any kind of a team fight. So he's getting a solo pickups all the time. Aggressive vision from side of a wheel, grants a lot of possibilities for a TA to burst down by heroes in the early game, like sanking or wallop in a matter of two hits. No. Yep, and well, on the mid lane, Derp Derp is a one Minami. Nope, oh. that's, that's a dead Papita. Yep. Uh, Echo Slam committed, Are you sure that there was nothing else that you could do. You could have face shifted that, but only if you're really quick and you saw that you're shaker before him. And now without Puck, there is no threat for a wheel. They're going for Roche, and it will be a fairly fast Roche. I mean, they deal some insane amount of damage, and after that is going to be Orchid and transition into Bloodfall. Oh, they actually want to fight for this, won't he be fast enough? That's a buyback for nothing, it feels like. Jump on the middle lane, on KVH, beautiful Fisher zoning out everyone. I mean, Lake, meanwhile, get rid of Papita, he's dying back. They keep on chasing the Legion Commander, he still got his Blink Dagger at Mad Mang, fairly fast. There's an Urn of Shadows also cancelling the Blink Dagger. Well, I mean, Lake jumping in, I mean, Boros striked. Oh, there's Fisher, a fish. finishing up Stinger. That's a disastrous fight, it feels like her elite was minus three and a dieback from Buck. There was a wasted golems and now they can't really defend even the high ground it feels like. Without these golems, they still got the epicenter, they still got a dream coil, but 
the snowball tension of our wheel is insane and I latest one man army 813 that's really great KDA he's on top of a net worth twice the net worth of Lycan yeah, I mean, there's th this TA has just kind of snowballed out of control. The plan that we all had was really clever. They d allowed her to get all the resources in the map, leaving the Trier Intrepid bit behind, allowing Annihilate to be your main hero anyway. You allow him to become a minute 20, a huge, huge threat as TA will become anyway. And if Drow Ranger becomes relevant, it's more in the late game. You also have, oh, top lane, actually, the Sanking will go down. You also have an Aghanims on Mad Meng, which helps out your your TA greatly. It's one of the few items that actually is, is pretty good on the TA because of that kind of uh, role you play. Usually, time left on a hero is more to heal up the HP and mana, but in this case, the positioning that Templar Assassin puts herself in is very dangerous, which is why I usually go for Hurricane Bike right after getting Desolator and Blink Dagger. However, by getting the time lapse with the Aghanims, you're able to go for something a bit more offensive on the Orchid, as you don't need that extra mobility on oh. the Hurricane Bike. Orchid, fuck, Papita, I mean, going down using his stick, I think letting him go, he didn't expect the stick usage, and he just lost a kill. You know, in this kind of a situation, so, well, on the top lane. Oh, Masako to be out being completely fine. Well, at least they will take a tier two. What I wanted to point out that in this kind of a lineups, when Drow Ranger is being played, uh, something like a Templar Assassin, she's immediately turning into Magnus, whose purpose in this game is literally give the empower, or in this case, draw over for TA to let her snowball. They're just playing around TA so much, and KVH will be just a utility. Utility Brawl Ranger. Meanwhile, they already lost Doctor, but they got ages. Stinger got no chance to do anything in this game, and he keeps on jumping in. Masoku survived this only with help of Lycan. Meanwhile, Papita, here comes the Dream Coil on two. Oh, there's the Lycan coming in with a shapeshift as well. Two Necronomicons up, and they want to kill someone, but they can't decide on a target. This poor Lycan will just use the Necronomicons really soon and lose his own life. Actually, the duel stops the Aegis, but that's only an Aegis, not really much more. Lycan himself finally finish off the shapeshift, and they can kill Shaq, a KVH, looking for that final hit. But Annihilate can't also angle himself properly. The Swarm won't hit him. In the end, the tower will just go down, and we'll want to continue this push ever so slightly, enough to at least kill one more person. Masoku in the wrong position at the wrong time. Annihilate finishing him off, and now the objective is to go for the melee Rex. Here come the over Overwhelming odds, but they do absolutely nothing as Annihilate just soaks up all the damage with a fraction. Silence of the Sanking, destroys him a second time. No more Epicenter, no more Warlock Golem, and we'll just take down a set of racks without breaking a sweat. It's fairly easy for them now. Question is, do they want to go for the second set of Rexes or back off, play a bit more safe, take shrines, um, get a couple of new items? Nah, GG. The GG is being pulled a minute 22. Fairly, what you can do, 17k gold advantage for a wheel, only to get a try to get a chance in the game too. Yep, uh, Elite Wolves recognize their loss pretty on and say, we're not going to tilt anymore, we're going to let Wheel take this first game at number one. 18 to 10 of the score, minute 22, second 31, and Wheel win the first game that will secure their spot to the Winner's Brackets Finals. They'll need to win a second game of this best of three so they can actually com compete in those Winner's Brackets Finals. Let's see what happens. We'll be back shortly. Of course, it's been the Pro Dota Cup American version, sponsored by Expert, and you cast it for today, I have myself, the Swordfish, joined by Vi. Dota. Feel free to follow us on Twitter if you did enjoy the cast. And if you didn't, feel free to tell us why in the comments below. Or not below, in the side, I suppose. <laughs> Look at the smash cast. And that said, guys, we will be back with game number two of this series very shortly. Stay tuned and enjoy some tunes while we wait. See you guys then.